Hey YouTube, Rico Nose here. Going to talk to you guys about the transfer portal update. Looking on Twitter, you see here Texas A&M linebacker Alex Howard is entering the transfer portal. Now this is a young man that left Youngstown State, transferred to Texas A&M, found out he can't play there and he's entering the portal. Now I don't mean to be harsh or rude or anything, but I want to be real, okay? Um, I made a video. I, I talk about every transfer portal player, if you guys didn't know. If you go to YouTube and you click on my videos, you're going to see these videos. But if you click on the live tab on my homepage, you'll see my live streams or my podcasts. And one particular podcast is transfer portal linebackers episode number one. Now, I have four or five episodes on every single position group. But in the linebacker episode number one, I talked about Alex Howard. And you'll see him here on the screen in the middle here. And this is the perfect time to play the video of me talking about Alex Howard from three months ago. Three months ago, I watched film on this young man. Three months ago, I assessed Alex Howard and his ability to succeed at Texas A&M. It's obvious he didn't succeed. But let's see what I said three months ago. Okay? This is why you need to watch the podcast. Next, Next kid is, is Alex, Alex Howard. Howard. I don't, I don't understand, understand this signing. signing. Alex, Alex Howard, Howard going, going from Youngstown, Youngstown State to Texas A&M. It's, it's obviously a step, a step up, up in competition. competition. This, this is, is a Cincinnati, Cincinnati Ohio, Ohio kid, kid out, out of Mount, Mount Health or Heath? Heath, Heath Healthy. Mount, Mount Healthy. Healthy. He attended Ball State, State in, his in his junior year, year for like, like workouts and camps. camps. No, no offers. No offers from Ball State. No offers from the... The Mac. Mac. So, you so you go, go to, to Youngstown, Youngstown State, State 6 to 230. 230. I, I get it. it. A&M's A&M's trying, trying to replace Edgar, Edgar Cooper, one of, one of the best, best linebackers, linebackers in the draft. draft. Edgar, Edgar Cooper, Cooper, one of the very, very best, best linebackers, linebackers in the draft. draft. You heard him here. First. First. I don't, I don't, I don't read, read mock drafts. I make mean, my, my own draft. I do my own thing. thing. And I'm telling you, Edgar Cooper was one of the best. So you got to find him. You got to replace him. Chris Russell. You got to replace Russell. And so you got a kid who had 76 tackles, 9.5 loss. But, but Alex, Alex Howard, Howard had, had offers. offers. Colorado, Colorado UCF, UCF, Syracuse, Syracuse Kansas, Kansas, South Carolina, Carolina Pitt. Pitt. I mean, a ton, ton of offers, offers from everybody. everybody. And, and it's, it's just, just one of those things where, where I don't think he made, made the right, right choice. choice. Maybe we went to the highest bid. And, and FCS All-Americans, All-Americans and FCS, FCS starters, starters are very, very cheap labor. labor. It's, it's, it's no, known. It's been talked about. Power five coaches are targeting the FCS kids. Because, because you can get, get them for much cheaper than one, than one of the top, top recruits. So, so this feels like a bargain move, move and, and he just doesn't, doesn't seem like, like much of an upgrade. I'll, I'll be very impressed if Alex Howard is starting, starting next year. I will. I will. Because, because I think, think uh, Torrey in New York is, is comparable. Geronte Davis is probably better. Martrell Harris is another kid. And Damian Sanford. All, All linebackers, linebackers worth a damn, damn on AM right, right now. Don't, don't see Alex Howard, Howard being, being that much better of an improvement. And, and I also don't, don't like that, that he's ranked as high, high among all, all these players. players. Like, like, this, I, I already told you guys, guys these rankings are dead, dead wrong. wrong. Dead, dead wrong. wrong. There's, There's Cooper, Cooper McDonald. McDonald. Okay, okay, let me, let me tell, tell you something. There's Cooper McDonald from San Diego State going to TCU. Here's Cooper. You know who was the defensive MVP? And the, the defensive, defensive MVP and the team MVP, MVP this year for San Diego State. Cyrus. That's his team, Cooper. Cooper. It's, it's this guy down here, here. Zyrus. Zyrus. Zyrus Faisu is, is the star defensive, defensive player and MVP at San Diego, Diego State this year. Number one player on the team. Voted on by his teammates. But 24-7 has been earned to rank him down here. And put Cooper McDonald ahead of him. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know these players. They, they don't, don't know these players. players. I'm, I'm letting, letting you know, know now. now. It's, it's gross. gross. So, so can you drink that? that? All right, so I let that keep going for a little bit because there is a rant here and there is some information I need to put out, right? So when you go look at 24-7 sports and you look at the linebacker rankings, you're like, wow, this kid, he's a three-star, high three-star, 8.9. And you start saying in every article, oh, we signed one of the top linebackers. But when I sit down and I actually look at film, you see this guy Barsham right here, Barham? Uh, the, the kid from Maryland, transferring to, to Michigan. World's better. A whole nother echelon better. But he's ranked below. And it just, 
tells me there's levels to this. And, and I want you guys to understand something. When I see an FCS level player in the transfer portal, I go watch as much film as I can find on them because I don't know them. Remember, I study the kids from high school and I study as many kids as I can. I probably know 500 recruits every recruiting cycle, 500. Right? I don't give a shit what ESPN says. I don't care what 24-7 says or on three. I study all the signing classes for all of the FBS level programs. And then just residually, I know some of the FCS kids because I do high school film reviews. So while I learn about 500 kids every single cycle, remember I do two high school film reviews a day. So that is roughly, I, I probably do it for 200 days out of the year. That's roughly 400 kids right there. And then obviously I know all the top 100 from the recruiting site. So I know about 500 a year. So if I don't know you coming out of high school, it's pretty rare, but it happens. And then I have to go study who you are with a clean slate. So I turn on the tape. I start looking at Jun uh, Youngstown State. I start looking at the tape. I'm watching number three. And I'm like, man, he looks good. I mean, he's a starting linebacker. He looks good. He doesn't look SEC good. He doesn't look like an improvement to the linebackers at Texas A&M. Mm -mm. He doesn't look 8.9 good. Nah, I think they got this wrong. And I think he chose the wrong team. Very clearly, I stated this three months ago. I didn't wait to see when he entered the portal. I didn't wait to see him play in spring ball and lose the starting job. I didn't wait for anybody else to say this. This is my gift. I can sit down and clearly assess talent clearly assess film and I know whether or not you're better than the people you're competing with I know it better than college coaches they're lying to these young men they're getting it wrong these college coaches are evaluating talent incorrectly now I don't I'm not going to accuse them of using 24 7 sports or on three because that's recruiting for dummies those stars and the whole ranking none of that's real that's what they do for the the simple person for the regular fan for the average fan but when you look at things from a clean slate and you just start lining it up and just start watching film, don't give a shit about stars. Just get focused on the film. It's easy to point out who the players are. You ever been out there at a pickup basketball game, pickup football game, and you're picking teams? And you go, oh, we'll take the 6'5 guy. I bet he can play basketball. And then as soon as the game starts, the homie starts double dribbling, double dribbling. Homie starts looking ridiculous. Like he's allergic to the ball and you go, oh my God, I got the wrong guy. I should have took the five foot point guard over there crossing everybody over. I took the wrong guy. Happens all the time. You got to look at the tape, turn it on and go, whoa. And I'm not saying Alex Howard's a bad football player because he is still going to probably pursue an FBS level offer. Now, I don't think he should. I don't think he should. I don't think he should be like, okay, maybe you want to go to Cincinnati. I don't think so. I think he needs to be in the MAC. I think he needs to go to Western Michigan, Central Michigan, Kent State, somewhere in the MAC, Ball State. That's what he looks like to me. I study film. I watch every player. I know every player. I don't wait. And I don't care that it's a young man that just signed in the SEC. I don't care. That has no bearing on me. I don't give a shit what team evaluated you and told you you were good enough to make their team. Their process is flawed. That's right. The SEC, their pro guys, the SEC makes mistakes. FBS coaches make mistakes. Hell, the NFL makes mistakes. Half the draft picks getting cut. They can't even get it right when they got to only pick seven guys to improve their team. They can't find seven dudes to make their team. And they need seven. That's why undrafted free agents end up making the team. I can remember the Dolphins last year had four draft picks in the whole draft. Four. That's it. Only four draft picks. And two of them got cut. They probably got a scouting service, a scouting size of 20 people. They're probably paying millions of dollars to all their scouts, their evaluators, their this, that, this, all player personnel and charge of development, all this. They're paying all these guys to find two people? It's disgusting. I am one man, primarily on TikTok, YouTube, Patreon, 
Twitter. I am one man, and I can identify the talented players and the ones that aren't. And I'm getting it more right than any of these FCS, FBS programs. I don't care. Call it like you want to see it. The videos are there. This is three months ago. And I'm going, nah, that SEC team, nah, man, they blew it. And this ain't the first time, guys. I have a whole fucking series called Rico Knows Strikes Again. Rico Knows got it right. I, I do this. This is literally, literally over 15 athletes now that I've looked at their film and said, oh, no, they made the wrong choice. And the dudes are back in the portal this cycle. I made these videos in December, January time frame. And they're back in the portal after spring ball. They didn't wait a year. They didn't wait to see them fail on, on a Saturday. And I'm out here predicting I don't think they're going to start. No, they're not going to start. They got to get, get your shit and go. We just had exit meetings, and you're not good enough. We only got 85 seats, bro. And there's, motherf- there's dudes online saying Rico ain't it. Rico don't know what he's talking about. There's people out there claiming to be professionals at this. Where's the proof, bro? The proof is in the pudding. My proof is right here every day. It's all posted in 4K. Shout out to Alex Howard. I hope you find a new spot, but it's not going to be in the SEC. Get real.